to be taken a look at using hook event dispatcher instead of hooks. It is a module that defines some events and lets us use them. It is using events instead of hooks. So let's use it in our next module where we're going to implement an event for the hook entity view. And we're going to see which events we could use with the help of the hook event dispatcher module. So on drupal.org under the projects page we see that hook event dispatcher is basically a module that dispatches events for several Drupal core hooks. So let's copy this bit here from the URL and let's jump to our Drupal code base and let's composer require this module in order to download it. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and jump to our Drupal instance and under extend, let's go ahead and enable the module hook event dispatcher. There it is. So install. And as we're installing it, it's not doing anything, but it's enabling us to use events in order to hook to some Drupal core hooks. So in order to use it, we would have to create our custom module and basically use the events from the hook event dispatcher module. So let's jump to our code base and inside of the modules folder, let's go ahead and create a new folder called custom. And inside of it, we're going to be creating our new module. It's going to be called Drupal up hook events and we're going to be creating a new file called the name of our module dot info dot yml and we're going to say it's drupal up hook events description events instead of hooks type module core 8.x and here we're going to declare also dependencies depend and we're going to say that we have a dependency to Drupal and then we're going to say that it's the hook event dispatcher machine name so it's always prefixed with Drupal and then hook event dispatcher so dependencies and we're going to now create a event subscriber and we're going to create a normal event subscriber the way we'll do it for any other event inside of Drupal 8 but we're going to be subscribing to an event that is declared inside of the hook event dispatcher module. So let's go ahead and create our event subscriber by creating a new file inside of our module, inside of the SRC folder and inside of the event subscriber folder. And we're going to call our event subscriber entity view subscriber and the entity view subscriber is going to be registering a callback for the hook entity view event so this way we're writing here a php class that is called entity view subscriber and we are having a namespace that is always starting with Drupal and then the name of our module Drupal up hook events and then we're including also the 
event subscriber folder here inside of the namespace event subscriber and that's all we're going to be implementing the event subscriber interface so in order to do that we're going to be saying here use symphony component event dispatcher and then the event subscriber interface and we're going to be here implementing it the event subscriber interface that's perfect so we're seeing here that this is our entity view sub subscriber class and inside of the event subscriber class we are supposed to declare a public static function called get subscribed events and we're going to be returning a array with the subscribed events so the event and the callback where the callback would be a function that is a public function inside of the event subscriber class so in order to see what events do we have declared from the hook event dispatcher module we're going to go to the contrib folder and hook event dispatcher this is the folder that we downloaded with the help of composer and we're going to open the src and then the hook event dispatcher interface and it's a good practice to have all the events here as constants so we're interested in the entity view but as you see here there is also a entity insert entity update pre-delete delete pre-save pre entity access there are events for field access there are events for form author which is very popular for path events view events team events and you could check them by yourself but we're going to be implementing the entity view event and in order to implement it it's a good practice just to use here like this we, we're saying use and we are kind of including this way the hook event dispatcher interface and here we could say just hook event dispatcher and we are calling the constant that is having the name of the event so we're saying entity view and as a value we are saying the callback that we're going to declare inside of our entity view subscriber class and we're going to call this entity view callback and we're going to declare it here as a public function and event like this so we could say our callback function and here it's a good practice just to say like this that's perfect and now if we just go to our custom module and if we create a new file called the name of our module dot services dot yml we're going to say here services and we're going to 
say first Drupal up, so the name of our module, and we're going to say hook entity view. And for a class of this service, we're going to define Drupal, then Drupal up hook events, and then event subscriber and then the name of our event subscriber class which is called entity view subscriber and this is the normal way to declare a service and in order to make it an event subscriber we're going to add here tags and we're going to say name event subscriber that's perfect so let's go ahead and jump to our Drupal instance again and refresh the extent page and if we search for our Drupal up hook events module we see that under here it has as a requirement the hook event dispatcher which comes from the dependencies inside of our info.yml file. So let's go ahead and enable this module. And after we enable it, we're going to put here a output. So like we're going to say kind event so that we see what we have there and then die and if we now go to our content page and if we add a new article for example because the articles are events and if we say test article and if we save it and we view it we see that our event subscribers callback is being triggered and if we check this is the output from our kin in order to use kint of course we have to have the develop kint module installed just fyi so here we see what methods do we have at our disposal so we could get the entity and do stuff with it and then set the entity in order to alter it and this is all a way to hook in the entity view so everything that you would usually do in the hook entity view you could now use the hook event dispatcher in order to register a callback for this event so as you see here the build is something that you could alter but in our case we are just getting the build and then we could be just setting the build which is a much nicer way to interact with the Drupal API so let's go ahead and quickly get the build so let's say get build and here now we have the build so we have the view mode which is full we have the entity type for example we could check for the entity type and do stuff there we have here some renderable so let's go ahead and just add some renderable there so let's go ahead and say build equals event get build and let's say build new renderable is simply a renderable of type markup and with markup hello from our changed renderable 
that's perfect so let's close it correctly and in the end we would have to say event obviously set build as you saw it exists so we're going to simply set the build with the build and we're going to just remove this and if we now just refresh the page we see that we have here an additional renderable that is coming from the hook entity view event that we subscribe to so if you like this video please take a look at the links in the description below like subscribe ask if you have any questions take a look at the patreon page of drupal up in order to support this project share on twitter and facebook if you want to and if you like this video and thanks for watching